Yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy Grip and Rip Sports Cards back here with another video for you guys today. And in today's video, what we're going to be talking about is the latest Tops controversy and how this will affect the hobby long term throughout you know the months, years to come. So yeah, obviously yesterday we talked about a pretty big controversy yet again from Tops, and you know we're gonna talk all about it again and you know what this means long term and you know from the future of the hobby to now we're gonna talk all about it. So. Before we get into that, thank you so much for joining me on this video. Can we get a minimum of 100 likes on today's video? As that's the best way you can help me grow this channel is by hitting that like button to show your support for all the content that we do make here on the channel on a daily basis. And speaking of growing the channel, we're doing a giveaway. We're giving away hobby packs of baseball cards, most likely of Series 1, once we hit... 8,000 subscribers. All you have to do to enter is be publicly subscribed, like this video, turn on the post notifications, and comment what you're looking forward to in the MLB season in 2024. And I'll pick the winner once we hit 8,000 subscribers. So there is that. Should not be too long from now. Relatively soon, while well, we're about 250-ish away. Um, so we're getting there slowly but surely. So uh, only a matter of time at this point before we give away yeah, a couple packs of baseball cards. So there's that. And of course, my last announcement, the Purely Podcast is available. Episode 1 is out now on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. If you want to watch the YouTube version, the link to that is going to be in the description of every video going forward. For So whenever we upload a new video, I will let you know. And of course, on Apple or Spotify, wherever you have like Apple Music or Spotify, I think it's premium, whatever they have over there. I use Apple, so I don't really know anything much about Spotify premium. But um, either way, if you you could, you know, if you're on the way to work or something, you could put it on the car. It'll be there. So there's that. Happy to be a part of it. Um, we're going to be grinding a lot of content over there. So hopefully you guys do enjoy that. So there is that. So let's get into the topic at hand in today's video, which is... Of course, the latest tops controversy that we do have on our hands. So, if you have been living under a rock over the last couple days, there has been basically a lot of news you probably missed, <laughs> to put it lightly. So, and it's funny because I don't know if I mentioned this in yesterday's video or not, but I was actually going to make a whole video about this like three or four days ago, but I never did um, because I just waited for more information to come out. You know, the, the, the golden quote, and I love this quote, is you never want to be first, you want to be right. So, of course, you know, I didn't want to jump the gun on anything and start saying this, that, or whatever um, because obviously I wanted to wait for more information to be coming out over what was going on with the um, first card print and lack thereof on the cards. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'll wait for something else to come out. Because I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was. Um, because obviously, you know, when Tops promotes something. And that thing is not like there. And it's like wrong. And people are starting to find out. Because how I figured this out was for one, I was trying to find maybe the first card of like a pirate or something on eBay. Which never showed up. And then all of a sudden... There was a card that showed up. I forget the name of the player, but it wasn't a pirate. It was a one of one, but it was a base card. I was like, hold up. Like, why is this a one of one? And then the light bulb at that moment literally clicked in my head. Like, oh my God, that is actually the first card and something is wrong with it. That's literally like that. I kid you not. That is literally the light bulb moment that popped in my head saying, oh my God, there is like something going wrong with this set right now. And I was like, you know what? I'll wait for it to be announced. I'll wait for more people to talk about it. And I guess more people talked about it because Tops, of course, made a statement on this, which, you know, Tops very rarely make statements on these things. The only time they do is if they absolutely have to from lack of, you know, communication and, you know, people are just outraged. And luckily, we got them to speak, you know. So basically what happened was obviously the first card logo, which is, 
apparently the first printed card of that player for the set, which obviously I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. No, it's not. There are tons of prototypes out there that get burned and destroyed um, that are first cards. But, you know, it is what it is. Tops, I'm under the assumption. Here's what I'm under the assumption of. They literally just pick a random base card and just give it the first card and logo just to give it it. I highly doubt those cards that have the first logo or I should say that one of one on the back. I highly doubt there's that, those are actually the first cards that were printed of that player. I just don't think that is. That's just not realistic how that works. Um, so realistically, I mean, they just probably picked a random base card um, just to put the one on one logo on the back of them. And that was it. Probably that's, you know, that's how it works. Um, either way, um, you know, we're going to talk about today what this means for the long-term future of the hobby because, you know, I talk to some buddies. I have a lot of friends who are card collectors, and I'll tell you one thing. A lot of them are just getting fed up, absolutely fed up with these things that are going on over tops. And really and ultimately, can you blame them? Really, I mean, a lot of collectors, you know, casual hardcore which i will call ourselves the hardcore collecting fan base because realistically and truthfully um we are you know we're watching videos about sports cards we're making videos about sports cards we're in facebook groups and things like that so i will call those people the hardcore collectors you know you have a card instagram like i do or something like that um the casual collectors i will define them as basically people who buy retail once in a while, and that is it. So um, if I use that lingo in this video, that is what I mean by, you know, casual and hardcore, right? So um, let's start out with the with the hardcore fan base, because I'll kind of split this video in two different parts, um, because I do have some hardcore collecting friends, and I also have some casual card collecting friends as well. So I'll, I talk to literally all of them about this, and I'll, let you, I'll literally let you know what they think, every single one of them, about this controversy. So basically... Hardcore collectors, um, you know, all my friends, we're all in a group chat. We're all in the same group chat together. So, um, basically, my hardcore collecting friends, um, you know, they said this is nothing new. Um, they said literally same shit, different year. That was literally one of the, what uh, what one of them said um, in the group chat that we're in. And I have to agree. I mean, I absolutely have to agree. Um, the tops quality control. I mean, it's it's bad. I mean. I don't know what happened. Well, I really do know what happened. It's the Fanatics acquired Tops. That's what really what happened. Um, but ever since they were acquired by Fanatics, the quality control of these baseball cards have been absolutely abysmal. Terrible. You can't defend it. You absolutely cannot defend it at this at this time. You just can't because it's one one time I'll give the pass, right? But when these problems happen over and over and over and over again, you can't you can't pat them on the back and say good job you tried. You can't because it just happens so many times it's inexcusable. For a billion dollar company and yes, Fanatics is a probably multi-billion dollar company because they literally own every license to every major sporting brand out there except maybe a couple just a couple i don't know exactly all of them they they have like 95 percent of all major sports companies you know wwe nhl nba nfl mlb nascar i do believe major league soccer they own pretty much everything ufc probably as well i'd have to assume um and things like that so they are a multi-billion dollar company and when a multi-billion dollar company can't get things right as simple as this, that is pretty bad. I mean, you know, I don't think, and I've, I have been, you guys know if you've watched me on the channel for a long time, I talk about this very frequent, frequently when we talk about things like this. I do not think they have quality control testers in their, in their, in their, um, uh, what's it called, uh, factories. Just like Activision with Call of Duty. They laid off like like 25% of all employees at their studios, which most of them were quality control testers. And guess what right now? This is a great example. Although it's not sports cards, it's the same thing. Call of Duty is, 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 is as worse as it has ever been because the quality control testers have been fired. All the games have bugs and glitches and broken things in the game. 
And that is only to blame Activision and Microsoft because when you don't have people like quality control testers, things like this happen. So I have said this time and time again. I am fully convinced because I just find it very weird how this stuff started to happen when Fanatics took over. I am firmly under the assumption, firmly under this assumption, is when Tops was acquired, Fanatic said, oh yeah, um, your quality control testers, they're fired. Layoffs definitely happen. That's just what happens. That's what happens when merger, like mergers happen and like when a company gets bought by a bigger company and things like that. Layoffs happen because the bigger company, the one that is buying the smaller company says, why do we need this smaller company's, you know, quality control testers when we have our own? That's exactly what happens in these type of situations. So... Again, I just don't think there are quality control testers. We could say the same thing about the jerseys and the pants in Major League Baseball right now. The pants are freaking see-through. You heard me right, if you've been living under a rock and heard this for the first time. The pants they wear are literally see-through. The jerseys they wear are cheaper. The print on the back of the jersey where the name is is a lot smaller. It's screen printed instead of stitched now. The moral of the story is those jerseys feel like they've gotten cheaper. And it's funny because as a fan perspective, they actually raised the price about $50. So there's that. You know, so Fanatics, again, I just don't understand why they continue to get these things wrong. And like I said with my hardcore collecting friends, all of us know this stuff happens. You know, listen, nobody's perfect. Nobody in this world is perfect, okay? But when these things keep happening time and time again, it makes you scratch your head. And us, the hardcore collectors, we are literally immune to this. We know it's going to happen. Listen, every time a new top set comes out, I expect there to be some sort of problem with it. That's just how it goes. You know, it's funny because before... 2022, when they were by themselves, none of this happened. None of this literally happened. But of course, when 2022 came around, all of a sudden, you know, higher print runs, fake autographs, quality control on the cards. Oh yeah, duplicate one-on-ones, which I forgot to mention in yesterday's little discussion. Duplicate one-on-ones in Bowman Chrome last year, which are still floating out there, by the way. So yeah. There are just a ton of controversies that have just spawned from Tops being with Fanatics. I wish, I, I mean, listen, I know this is not going to happen, but I'm just going to speak it into existence just because I want to. Competition makes consumers better off. When there is an exclusivity license like we are seeing right now, these companies feel too comfortable with what they're doing. And in essence, they don't change a thing because they say to themselves, well, we have no competition, so we don't have to make the best quality products possible because nobody out there is doing what we do, literally. I don't know how this happens. I know Fanatics has a grasp on the MLB license for a long time. But who's to say? I think I think the deal ends in 2035, I believe, or maybe 2034. Who's to say when that license don't expire? The current or the future commissioner of baseball, which we don't know who it's going to be yet because obviously Rob Manford is going to retire after this, this new term is, is done, right? Um, who's to say this? the new commissioner of baseball doesn't say, hey, uh, Fanatics, you royally have screwed over our fan base with the jerseys and the cards and the, the uh, you know, the apparel. We don't want to work with you no more. We don't want to work with you. We want to go to somewhere else who knows how to do what they're doing. That's got to happen. Or at least another, another company comes in as well, like Majestic. Majestic, if you don't know, used to be the um, jersey company who produced MLB jerseys, which were great. Majestic did a great job with those jerseys. No one ever said a word about how bad they were because no one thought they were bad. They were good material. They were good quality. 
They were not expensive. They were cheap. About $100 for a jersey. Now they're about $170. So, you know, keep that in mind. And everything like that. But what that means for Tops, I don't know. Because, of course, Tops is with Fanatics. And it would probably be very hard for another company to go, you know what, we want to buy Tops from you, Fanatics. Name your price, we're buying it from you. Probably very hard to do. I don't know the legalities of it, but it's possible. But again, that CEO of Fanatics, who does a terrible job, I'll continue to say it, will not give it up. I can promise you that right now. And the last thing I do want to talk about before this video ends is what the casual fans or the my casual friends think about this situation. And honestly, it's pretty sad because a couple of them actually said that they probably are going to stop collecting baseball cards sooner rather than later if this stuff keeps up. And, you know, I said, you know what? I don't blame you. That's literally what I said to them. I said, you know what? I don't blame you for that opinion. That is a very valid opinion. I said the same thing literally myself in yesterday's video. If they keep up doing what they're doing, I'm not going to give them money. I'm not going to give them any more of my money. Of course, they already got a lot of money from me from Series 1 this year. It is what it is. I can't return them, so it just it is what it is at this point. Um, but in the future, you know, like, let's say for a, a product like Heritage or a product like, you know, Big League or a product like, you know, Allen and Ginter, I'm just not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it and support that because if there's controversies and problems with these products... Now, I'm just not going to spend as much as I want to. Now, products like Chrome or 2024 Bowman that comes out in a couple months, in the blink of an eye, it'll, it'll literally be out. I'll spend some money, but not as much as I probably want to. But again, that's what, you know, the ball's in their court. Ultimately, to wrap this video up, I'll say this. The ball is in their court. You know, they're the ones that have control over these controversies. They're the ones that could literally fix them before they even get to the public if they wanted to. So the ball is truly in their court. There is nothing else that I could possibly say except the ball is in their court. They have all of the power and all the ability to fix these things, and they don't. And they think that we're stupid. I'm telling you right now, they think we are stupid and we're not going to notice. Well, boy, oh boy, did we notice. Did we notice indeed. So... That is all I got for you. That is all I got for you in this video today, guys. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. But of course, before we do leave, we are going to open a pack of Jumbo in this video. Um, I have four more packs left after this. You have four packs. Um, honestly, I will say this. And this might be tomorrow's video. Um, I don't know if I, if I have another topic, I'll do that. But I do want to make a video um, on Jumbo boxes in and of itself. Because I'll tell you one thing, man. Um, the, the jumbo boxes this year are very bad in terms of like parallels and things like that. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Do we have anything of notes? I mean, we have a backwards card and we have one backwards card at least. So could it be numbered? I don't know. Let's see here. I mean, these things are so bad, dude. I don't know. I, I honestly thoroughly regret buying a jumbo box i do um because there is literally like here we go here's all the um cards already so i hate how the parallels are literally like one pack in the entire box but either way we have a trey turner 88 an adley rutschman and we have a sean murphy silver foil with a all team i think this is called all team i could be wrong uh, but it's, I think it is, um, of Adley Rutschman. And now we go to the base yet again. Yeah, we're definitely opening another pack to wrap this video up. Dude, this pack was awful. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh, this awful. Again, I'll preface. I might make a video about this tomorrow if I have nothing else to talk about. People are not happy. Joey Votto, so he's still a free agent, surprisingly. Um, yeah, that pack was, oh, my God, that pack was bad. Um, I'll open another pack here to wrap this video up. We'll open another smaller pack because I just, you know, I, I just feel like terrible, like with how these packs are. I don't know. But I, I, I said this to my brother literally right before I, I started this video. I said, I'm probably done buying series one. I'm not going to buy probably anything else um, because I just there. I have literally gotten nothing good. I kid you not. I have literally pulled absolutely nothing good. Uh, we have we might have one of those speckles. This is from a monster box, of course. We might have one of these speckles in here. I assume that's what that is. I I could be wrong. 
Um, but whatever it is, we'll just wrap it video up with uh, Colton Kowser. That's a that's a good one. Kyle Freeland. We have a Manny Machado. Uh, don't feel like a speckles. Oh yeah, it is. Okay, it is. So it's a speckle. A Machado. That's pretty cool. I mean, I will say these cards are pretty nice. Um, you know, it is what it is. I like them. But again, you know, what is that? South Free look. Uh, Marsh, Morel, and Varsho. I will say this to wrap this video up to say one last thing. I will check your base cards. I'm literally checking every single one right now. Going forward, I would check all your base cards because you never know. You truly never know because you're going to probably miss. If you pull a one on one, you're probably going to miss it and you're going to be upset. Maybe you throw it away. Maybe you sell it on eBay. You just never know. You never know. And yeah, so there's that. So, guys, I'm getting out of here. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next video.